Rachel Whetstone, Google's head of communications and policy, has been poached by Uber, another of Silicon Valley's controversial tech giants. But how will the jobs compare and what does the move say about Silicon Valley's PR machinery? With me to answer this and more is John Gapper, the FT's chief business commentator. Uh, John, why should we care about Rachel Whetstone's move from Google to Uber? Well, I think a lot of people's first instinct would be to say, well, we don't really care about PRs. Surely they're not the most important part about a company. But what's interesting about this move and, and why it's significant is that a lot of Silicon Valley companies, particularly Uber, have found that as they expand globally, as they try to challenge laws and regulations, as they try to disrupt industries, uh, their relations with lawmakers, regulators, and their general public image is becoming one of the most important aspects of their business. So they need people at the top who actually know how to relate to policymakers and persuade policymakers. Uh, um, Uber has David Plouffe uh, as a former Obama advisor in there doing a that's, similar job. That's right. I think when David Plouffe arrived, the uh, assumption was that uh, Uber would adopt a campaign approach to trying to persuade uh, regulators in particular. What's interesting, I think, about Rachel Whetstone's move is that, in a sense, it's, it's reinforcing the message that there's a broader public relations battle that Uber has to win. And Uber, of course, hasn't floated yet. It still has its IPO to come, even though its pre-money valuations are very high, around $40 billion. So it's looking towards going public. So that raises another issue. Obviously, it's an interesting job. Google is it's fighting battles in Europe, among other places, on regulation. It still has some interesting regulatory and policy uh, hurdles to cross, but it is already a public company. Uh, is that base, the base reason why Rachel Whetstone or somebody might choose to move to a company before IPO? Well, Rachel Whetstone's a very senior figure within Google, and clearly she's got a lot of experience of uh, fighting or, or debating some of these issues in public. Uh, Google's had a set of complex issues to deal with in Europe. So it's that sort of experience and that sort of sophistication in dealing with the public image that I think U Uber is looking to try to recruit, and it, it clearly has got quite a bit of a battle on its hand. It's a very controversial company. So it's, it's reinforcing, essentially, its, its regulatory strength or its policy making and policy strength. That's right. I mean, I think the message of hiring both David Plouffe and Rachel Whetstone is you can't have too much of this sort of thing. Right. Google, on the other hand, I mean, is obviously mature enough to now be almost a factory for people. I read somewhere that uh, uh, Google uh, former communications executives from Google are now involved in heading communications at Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Tesla, lots of Silicon Valley companies. Do you think it matters that Google is losing high profile people of this sort or is that just part of the Silicon Valley churn? Well, I think Rachel Whitson's uh, an exceptional figure in the sense that she's, she's very senior within the company. She's on the executive committee and as close advisor to Larry Page, the chief executive. But as you say, Google is, uh, we don't think of it this way, but it is actually quite a mature public company. It went public in 2004. It's, uh, it, it knows the ropes and it is a machine for producing and recruiting uh, professionals of all sorts and public relations is, is part of that. I mean, I guess it's a bit of a sign, a bit like General Electric sometimes likes to think of itself as a generator of talent for other companies that, that of Google's success. I mean, they could take it as a feather in their cap that their top people are desired by other Silicon Valley companies. I think that's right, but I also think that within Silicon Valley, clearly it's not just that people see a motivation in going to pre-IPO company for financial reasons, that it's a way of of getting stock, which, which, is, which when it's then floated, you become wealthier, simple as that. It's also a level of excitement uh, that a lot of people within Silicon Valley might just simply get bored at being at large, uh, predictable companies and want to go back into the startup culture. So we might see this um, flow of people, but also flow of money that they're earning at the bigger companies feeding back into the Silicon Valley 
um, ecosystem later when she perhaps decides that Uber is now mature enough to, to move on to do other things. I mean, yes, who knows? But I think that this isn't an unusual move, actually, to move from a large established Silicon Valley company into a smaller startup. Uh, it happens for software engineers. It happens for all sorts of professionals. And often people say, well, why is this person moving from what seems to be a very safe job into a risky job? But that's the appeal of Silicon Valley. Great. John, thanks very much.